Happy New Year everyone! Welcome to another story presented by yours truly, Cryptids Roost. Please be so kind as to throat punch the like button and don't forget to smack the ass of that subscription button as well. This will help with the YouTube's algorithm and will help promote the channel more. If you would like to support the channel and help make it grow, any donations can go to paypal.me slash cryptidsroost and don't forget to check out the merch store. All links are listed below. So grab your coffee, sit back and enjoy the show. I Hate My New Apartment, Part 5 This fantastic series is written by Rosé Black 2222, a wonderful author over on Reddit's No Sleep. Well, those two days were not as relaxing as I hoped. At least I was able to sleep in. I do have some stuff to share with you though. On my second day off, I heard someone knock on my door. I opened it to see Sal's standing in front of me. He nodded up to me and I let him in. Got something for me? I asked. I do, he replied. My owners are out of town for a few days. With that being the case, I think now is an opportune time to search for information. My plan for that day was going to be watching some Christmas movies while gorging myself on eggnog and cookies. But seeing as how I wanted whatever the hell is wrong with this place solved, I agreed to go with Sal's. Where to? I asked. My place, first. I started towards the end of the hall. No, he said, shaking his head. This way, he gestured with his head. But that leads outside. Sometimes you need to go out to go in. Sal then started making his way to the door, and I followed. I watched him squeeze under the front desk. I dropped to my knees to see what he was doing. It turned out there was a hole in the floor that he was able to go into. I figured it led him outside. So I went out to meet him. I looked around to find Sal, but I couldn't find him. That is until I heard what sounded like someone stomping the ground. I looked round to see Sal standing behind me. I walked over to him. He pointed with his head at some bushes that lined the side of the building. I parted them to find a hole in the wall. I bent down to examine it more closely. It looked as if some bricks had been knocked away to make it. Did you do all this? Not entirely. Time did most of the work. This building is very old. I merely found a point where part of it was severely weakened, then knocked away some bricks to make this hole. After which, I followed it to the floor beneath the front desk and dug my way out of it. That's impressive. But what would you do if someone decides to move the desk? Not to worry. I have other ways in. Speaking of which... He led me to the other side of the building. I found yet another hole hidden behind some bushes. After you, Sal said. Uh, is something the matter? I'm kind of claustrophobic. I see. That is a problem. He thought for a moment, then said, I know this will be difficult for you. However, to achieve your goals, you sometimes have to face your fear head on. Right, I murmured, then took a deep breath. Well, here goes nothing. I got down and crawled into the hole. It was a bit of a tight squeeze, which did not sit well with me. Still, given that a goat made this hole, it was surprisingly a fully grown person could get through it. To say I hate enclosed spaces is an understatement. I have that apartment trying to crush me incident to thank for that. While crawling in the tunnel, I thought the building would try to crush me again. I got through it though. Well, that was awful, I said, having reached the inside of Sal's apartment. So, what do you want to show me? Over here, he told me, motioning towards a large shelf of books against the wall. Make sure your hands are clean before looking through them. The last thing we need is my owners getting suspicious, and I can't stress this enough. Put whatever book you take out back where you found it. Yeah, I know that. Which one should I start with? There are five I want you to skim through. Obviously, we don't have time for you to read them, but you can at least 
look at the illustrations. I flipped through them. The books were old and bound together. They contained a text in a language I didn't recognize. The only way I could describe it is somewhat looked like runes. The drawings showed different monsters. Some were grotesque lumpy masses with multiple eyes. Some resembled tangled tentacles with a dozen mouths. I looked through a few more pages. I'm guessing the text contains some sort of summoning instructions. Most likely, I cannot read it. But by the way, my owners tend to look at those books before in their rituals. I think so. Trying to summon eldritch monsters, huh? I'm guessing your owners aren't exactly the poster children for mental health, I asked, continuing to look through the books. A gross understatement. If I've ever heard one, they've been trying to summon these things ever since they got me. I froze at one image. The creature on it looked like a snake-like, fleshy, scabbard trumpet. It had so many eyes covering its head, it reminded me of a bouquet of flowers. A few of its eyes were open to reveal jagged shards of teeth. Sal's noticed me looking at it. Has something caught your eye? He asked. I showed the image. I recognize this thing. I think I heard it. Really? He asked, intrigued. When? I proceeded to tell him about the last experience I had. He listened intently, nodding his head every so often. When I finished, he asked me if I had seen Angelica since then. I replied no, and inquired if there was any way to help her. There may be. For now, though, we have to focus on the task at hand. Speaking of which, there is one last book I want you to see. It's the middle one on the bottom row. Open it to the last page. When I looked at it, I saw that the monster on it wasn't that scary looking, actually. It was just a human male with wings like a bird and the head of a spider. Who the hell is this? He is a demon known as Venetai. According to the research my owners have done, his venom can give followers immortality. There are other creatures that can too, though, right? So why focus on him? Because he is willing to cross over. As in, to our world? Correct. Venetai is one my owners are focused on summoning currently, and he'll bring the end times with him. Wait, trying to summon the other ones hasn't worked? What makes him any different? And for that matter, how many of them have your owners tried to summon? Do they have a monster of the week or something? Sort of. You see, there are many demons like him, and people such as my owners who try to summon them. However, most do not come here even when someone tries to summon them. The reason being, they don't see the point. To them, looking at our world would be like us stopping to look at a blade of grass. Sure, they might find the chaos caused just by their presence alone amusing, but they would quickly grow bored of it. Quickly to them, anyway. For us, it'd be like 10,000 or so years. Among these creatures are a few narcissistic ones. They would gladly be worshipped until the end of time. If given the chance, Venetite has such a personality. Shouldn't we burn this book then? Your owners can't summon Venetai if they don't know how, right? I'm afraid that won't do any good. They already wrote down the instructions and are currently gathering the materials to summon him. Great. And you didn't eat the book like a goat because... I was afraid they'd kill me if I did. Oh. I would have contacted someone sooner but I didn't see anyone I could trust. That is, until I found you. What makes me so special? Unlike the other residents, you aren't insane. Maybe not yet. I'm getting there, though. Hang in there. If we work together, we can stop this and find what I am looking for. What exactly are you looking for? The location of my family. They stole me from a farm. 
I had a girlfriend and two kids. I miss them deeply. Oh, sorry to hear that. You can't remember where it is? Unfortunately not. They stole me one night. I was knocked out with a drug of some kind. When I woke up, I found myself here. I can't promise you anything, but I'll do my best to help you. I appreciate that. I've shown you all I can know. But now, I think you should get going. I need to make sure nothing is out of place for when my owners return. Yeah, it's getting late. Hey, why don't I give you a treat tomorrow? What do you like? Carrots. But I can't have too many. They tend to mess with me. I'll keep that in mind. Later. Sals told me goodbye, and after another agonizing crawl through the tunnel, I was back outside. I wanted to go out the front door. However, Sals pointed out that I wouldn't be able to lock the deadbolt if I did that. I didn't feel quite as panicked going through the tunnel for the second time though. When I was out, I stood up and brushed myself off. I began to round the corner to head back inside when someone caught my eye. It was Tom. He was getting out of his car while talking on his phone. I crouched behind the bushes in case he looked my way. It was too windy to hear everything he said, but I made out a few sentences. Yeah, and I sent them to town to get it, like you told me. I'm keeping the other stuff at my place though. I don't want that goat eating it. Anyway, is there anything else you need, sir? Okay, got it. I'll make sure to do that. He then hung up his phone and headed inside. Of course, this asshole is somehow involved in all this, I thought. I wondered who he was talking to. I thought it might be the owner of the building by the way he referred to him as sir, but I wasn't entirely sure. I was also curious what he sent Sal's owners out of town to get, and what he meant exactly by other stuff. I peeked through the building's entrance to make sure I didn't see Tom, then went back inside. When I got to the floor of my apartment I was on, I saw Sal standing back out in the hall. Tom? I whispered. He nodded. He sent me out for a little bit. I'll try to listen for what I can though. He also whispered. I gave him a thumbs up before heading inside my apartment. That night, I had an extremely real feeling nightmare. Usually, I wouldn't bother mentioning something like this. In this case, however, I feel like I should. It started nicely enough. I was standing in a bunch of different flowers. A stream quietly flowed to the right of me, and it had a tree by it, in which various fruits grew on it. Some I recognized, others I didn't. I grabbed a blue sparkly looking fruit off the tree due to my stomach's immense growling. It tasted like a blueberry pie made fresh. When I finished eating it, I grabbed more fruit. I bit into one and that tasted like peach cobbler. Another tasted like a banana split. And another tasted like caramel cheesecake. As I was enjoying my food, I heard the sound of wings flapping. I looked up to see a figure high in the sky flying towards me. How are you enjoying your stay in my garden? He asked, landing in front of me. He was at least eight feet tall. I didn't think much of him before, but that drawing didn't exactly capture his full physique. His body had a muscular, rough quality to it. His fangs dripped venom that melted the flowers between our feet. Lastly, his snow-white wings were folded in as he was talking to me. But when he was descending, I couldn't see the sun when they were spread out. The only piece of clothing he had on was some kind of robe covering his lower half. You, you, you are Venetai. That I am, Ethan. How did you know? You are living in my building. I kind of have to know. Wait, you own it. When? How? Long story short. A while back, some guy who was down on his luck made a contract with me. I had him follow my instructions to make the apartment complex. Later on, he found out what was happening to the tenants. 
out of guilt over how many people fell victim to it, he offered himself. He was supposed to gather people to worship me, meaning I hit a rut for a while after his death. That is, until I met Tom. He has been doing great work for me. So you were the one he was talking with on the phone earlier. Do multi-dimensional beings have their own cell phones? I jokingly asked. As a matter of fact, yes, he replied, snapping one into existence. Oh, well, either way, you aren't getting into our world, and you're going to give me back my deposit. I wouldn't take that tongue with me if I were you. Or what? This is a dream, right? Which means you can't hurt me. He responded by pinching my neck with his thumb and index finger. Instantly, I felt my body go limp and then I fell on my back. Oh, the hell did you do to me? You know, Ethan, I kind of like you. How about you help me out? I can make it worth your while. I might actually have considered accepting your offer if it weren't for one small thing. And that is? The apartment's trying to kill me? I would have contacted you sooner but I can only talk with those who have viewed what I look like and the text that tells how to summon me. My mind went to Sal's. I guess he made an error in judgment. Wait, I couldn't read the text though. I never said you had to. Just catching a glimpse of it allows you to talk to me. Oh, and by the way, whatever you get here, you take with you when you wake up. So. It's like some Nightmare on Elm Street rules, huh? Pretty much. That's a great movie, by the way. Let's not go too far off topic, though. I can tell there is something special about you, Ethan. Most people either fall victim to the apartment, either mentally, physically, or both. Some flee and never look back, deposit back or not. You've done neither of those things. I guess it's your stubbornness that has drawn me to you. What can I say? I hate being ripped off. Oh, and seeing as how this is a dream, I said, then kick flipped off the ground, landed on my feet. I'm going to raise you from existence. He just laughed. This is my dream too, he said, knocking me away. Despite his size, he was quick. I barely had enough time to conjure up a shield of some kind. I went flying into the stream. Now, what did we learn? That you're an asshole, I said, standing up. Well, I don't mean to brag, but yes, and that I am far more powerful than you can comprehend. I saw the dream starting to fade. Am I waking up? Yes, but don't worry. You can come back here whenever you like. I just got a couple of ideas. Really? Do tell. For one, I said, then conjured up a mud ball and threw it, hitting him in the face. He growled at me, then began flying towards me. I hope you don't mind waking up with an arm missing. That brings me to my next idea. I made a giant bag of money appear before me, then flipped Venetai off. He tried to hit me again, however, the dream faded away before he could do so. I let out a cry of pain when I woke up. I lifted my shirt to see a fresh bruise forming on my ribcage. Shit, I think he broke something, I thought. Oh well, at least I brought back enough money to move out. And then some. I'll still help Angelica and Sal's though. I sniggered as I opened up the bag only to find rocks. Bastard! I cried out. So, to recap, I found out that multiple demons are trying to break into our world, one of which I got beat up by, and I have to stop. The only silver line into all this is the fact that I may get to hit Tom again, but I don't want to have another dream with Venetai in it. I wonder if a charm or a spell or some kind would prevent that. I'll have to talk with Sal's about it. Anyway, I need to get to bed. I got work in the morning. Good night, everyone. Short update. Finally, 
I have some good news to share with you guys. The dream catchers did the trick. So fuck you, Venetai. Although, we did have to charm them. This was to make them stronger. Unfortunately, Salty's owners are back, which means communication with him has been severely limited. Still, I haven't had to deal with any weird shit for a bit. However, I will come December, which isn't very far away. I happen to adore this time of year and have already put up decorations for it. Usually I'd have a real Christmas tree up by now, but I get the feeling the apartment will be a bit festive in its approach to try and kill me. So the one I have up right now is artificial. I'll probably buy a real one if after I survive. Oh well, if I'm going to get murdered, at least I can look at some decorations while it happens. Before I go, and in case I die, I want to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. Eat lots of food and don't die. Last I checked, that tends to be detrimental to celebrating things. Anyway, that's it. Later. Stay safe, everyone. Wow, that was an epic episode. If you enjoyed listening to this instalment, be sure to pop over to the author's Reddit profile, Rose Black 2222 and drop them a line, or even give them a glowing review. The link to their Reddit profile will be below in the description, and be sure to check out their Patreon for more stories. The link to their Patreon will also be listed below. Thank you for listening, and if you enjoyed my narration, then please feel free to like and share the video, leave a comment below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell, and then select all. That way, you'll receive all notifications each time I upload a new video. Have you had any cryptid sightings, paranormal or supernatural encounters, or even had any creepy or terrifying situations that you would like to share? Or have you even written a creepy pasta story that you would like me to narrate? You can submit your stories and encounters to cryptidsroost at gmail.com. If you wish to remain anonymous, that's fine with me, not a problem. Now I also have a Facebook group, Twitter, Reddit and Discord, although I don't have my own server yet. Now again, all the relevant links will be below. If you would like to support the channel and help to make it grow, my PayPal is paypal.me forward slash cryptidsroost. Again, that will all be listed below. Oh, and one final note, I am in the process of creating a couple of merch stores one on Redbubble and one on Teespring, so be sure to keep your eye out for any further notifications of those. Okay? And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not.